<laughs> Hi, I'm Cindy. And I'm Dan. For the past two and a half weeks, we've been living in our dream house. Mm -hmm. But it's not finished. Far no, from it. Far from <laughs> it. In fact, last week you would have seen us installing the gypsum and plastering our main living area, right? Yeah. And this week, it's all about priming and also making a start in the bathroom. Yeah, finally get the plumbing going there so we can put the installation on the walls and get the pipe behind the camera out of your way. Yes, exactly. <laughs> we are living on site. This means that we're juggling with a lot of our stuff. And every time that we're tackling a project, we have a lot of stuff to move. Mm -hmm. But it's not, not stopping us from progressing. Far from it. Yeah, yeah, definitely. It's still motoring on, I think, in a, in a good tempo. Absolutely. In a better tempo. In a better tempo, <laughs> for sure. Yeah. For sure. Primer and bathroom week. <laughs> Let's do it. Let's do it. <laughs> right, for the next part of the project, we're going to be using a paint gun. Uh, this will just totally speed up the priming process in the main living area. And so, you know, we bought this paint gun at Leroy Merlin. It was not the cheapest that they had. In fact, we paid 69 euros for this little machine right there. They have a model that's a little bit cheaper right now. Of course, the price will probably change by the time that you see this video. Um, the other model is 29 euros. Now, the reason why we opted for this machine instead of the other one, it's first, it's a lot lighter. And because we have to also do the ceilings, we thought a lighter paint gun would be totally worth it for us. The main difference from this one and the cheap model is that this model has the pump and the whatever you call this pump, paint pump or whatever, the attached from the gun itself. The other one has the, the pump and everything in one mechanism, which makes it very heavy for one hand. And then you need to fill it with the... 600 milliliters of paint to get even heavier so we thought that maybe it's going to be easier to to have the pump system separate from the gun yeah support ourselves a little bit the other benefit of this paint gun is that it also accepts lassure and varnish and oil so for us this will become a really handy tool to have because on a yearly basis, we'll need to put linseed oil on the exterior of our house and also on the deck yeah. once it's ready. Yeah. So before we start, of course, using the spray gun, we need to mask more or less all the windows and areas that we don't want to paint. So the first part that you'll see is us putting some plastic and some tape on the wall. So you're turning into uh, Madame Blancheville because um, because we have to dust, right? Yeah. So then basically that's just our primer mixed with 30% water. Yeah. Like yeah. Thank you. 
Are you? Yeah, because it's too hot, it's clogging, right? Yeah, feels like it. And we've put like the the maximum amount of water in there. Yeah. So. A suggestion yeah. why don't we just clean it up good tonight to store it and now it's getting a bit hot during the day so why don't we just call it for today go and have dinner and then we revise the gun That's idea later, yeah. tomorrow yeah yeah, yeah? yeah? cool it seems like it's, uh, something, is, something is not working as it should I think yes exactly and it could be just as silly as being really hot right now. Yeah, that's it. Remember, like, the spray, the spray paint, it really wouldn't work. I like the concept so far. Yes. But I'm not 100% sold on the, sold on the product. Right, because I mean the result is really good though. Yeah. The result is truly brilliant, but uh, it's it's hard to gauge and to stop. Yes, because we have a tendency to want to maybe cover the entire wall. Yeah. And now when it started to freak out a bit, then we have to see how it goes. Let's clean it deeply yeah. and see it again when it's cooler tomorrow. Exactly. Let's break tomorrow, for dinner. Tomorrow morning. Yeah. So you think that yesterday's problem was because we didn't put enough Vaseline on there? I think maybe it was a bit, uh, I don't know if you need to do this, but it feels like the Vaseline will have the paint from, the paint from not sticking in the, in the end. Yeah. While uh, it might also be a bit dry yesterday when we were, or hot yesterday when we tried. It was very hot yesterday. So today we're trying again and see how it works with paint. 
otherwise we're fairly convinced that this is kind of an excellent choice for Lindsay Doyle for sure. Yeah. But let's see if we can master this paint element as well, otherwise we go back to the rollers, I say. Sounds good. Shall I do the upper part first? Yeah, if you want to do the upper part, then go to plumbing, and yeah. then after that I can Continue do the you. bottom part of the wall. That'd be good. And then you can kind of test it with your wealth of experience and tell me if it's working the way it should, or... Yeah. Let's see how many There you go. Okay, perfect. So I can be on the ladder, no problem. And then you're gonna go do some plumbing. Yes? Take it easy on the ladder, huh? I will take it easy on the ladder. Last case before my guests. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe you just go as far as you can without the ladder first and then you leave the ladder first. Okay, so you want to do the ladder? No, I'll do the ladder. You know how it is. I know, you're definitely going a lot better today. I don't know if it's because it's cooler or if it's because we wipe the nozzle of the pistol every time we fill it up. But um, but yeah, it's not clogging now, which is good news. So I'm making really, really good progress right now. big difference but the ceiling isn't done yet but still what a difference Dan's working on the plumbing do not disturb well guys we're really happy with how the primer turned out and the attention that we've put into sanding the plaster really, really shows. But we do have some little minor defect that we do need to address. And um, this will require a bit more spackling and a bit more sanding. So that's what you'll see next. plaster job is. It's kind of hard to live with a bad one, especially if it's the worst.
That's what. What, what part is that? The mixer. Okay, and you're having to measure it now to finish or start the plumbing in the bathroom. Can't wait to see that shower installed. The shower. How high do we, do we the, want? The bar, the mixer. What were you thinking? I had no idea. Like this? We don't have it in the back. I don't have it in the back at one time. One time. Then it's gonna be a bit of the shower tray. I think it's four. Yeah. Let's put it at 115 with, with the gypsum. So it's going to end up being one, around 110 when we're done. Okay. Sounds good. Do you have it in the back there? No, I don't. Yeah. But, like, does it go in the curve of your back? But you it's fine. I think it's good. If you're happy with it, I'm happy with it. You're okay. still going to have 90. Yes. Suspicious. And 180. Yeah. And then we have to decide shall we put them in the middle or shall we put them in the middle of 180? You see what I mean? Yes. I think we put them in because the tray is going to be either too short from one side, as we know, right? Mm -hmm. So is it from that side that's too short? Uh. It really doesn't matter. Like okay. Since we have the toilet and stuff there, I think that we need to build up that little yeah. six, seven centimeter extra wall here for the shower. Yeah. Has to fit in, right? Yes, 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 yes. And since we have the toilet and stuff here, maybe we have the obstruction on, in here so you don't see it. Okay, perfect. Really. So you're thinking like, do like an inner shelf, something like that in there? Maybe, yeah. yeah. Because this wall just has to be as wide as the. It's gonna be here, so we need to put another stud here. Yeah. So that builds 90, right? Yeah. And then we have two layers of gypsum, so we just end up here. Oh, nice. So I need to put another stud next to it here. Okay. So we have some firm to screw in. And yeah, yeah, I see what you mean. So another stud there. Because yeah. otherwise, the glass, yeah, and the yeah. Yeah. And one here. Because our glass is 180 times two, meters. times two meters. And it turns out that with the shower tray, well, we end up in between two studs, right? Mm. So you need to add another stud. Yeah. Fun. Thankfully, well, we have studs. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. We saved it for that reason. Yeah. And yeah. we also need to put, since we're going to have the uh, where you put the shower head on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In between, if the mixer is here, the rod is gonna go in the middle of everything. Yes. So we need to put an extra stuff in the middle as well, so we have somewhere to screw the, the rod. Gotcha. So yeah. we can we don't we are not restricted in height or down. Mm -hmm, so we mm -hmm. don't have to decide that we have to put a there the screw needs to be, for instance. Right? Yeah, I see what you mean. So the stud, the extra stud that you're adding there. It is just for us to be able to screw the showers. Yeah, later. as high as we want. Yeah. Without missing out on the brackets being too short. And... Yeah.
Okay, Dan. So, yesterday Dan started with the plumbing, the bathroom plumbing. And in, inside and out. <laughs> yeah, in and out. Yeah, that's right. And um, we were missing out a couple of pieces. So, we went to Braganza this morning. And we were missing one piece, of course. So, because we need all the pieces to connect it so we can put pressure on the system. So we see that it doesn't leak before we put the insulation and everything on. So in order to progress in the project, we really needed that piece that we bought one too little of. Yes. So we went to Braganza this morning. We bought it up, which means that today you can continue with this installation. Yeah. Now, once this installation is completed, as Dan was saying a bit earlier, it means that we can start putting the insulation, the gypsum, and really start going all in with the bathroom. Huh? Yeah. Um, the showers are a little bit frisky these days yeah. uh, because we do shower outside. Although the yeah. heat wave is it's supposed back. to start it's officially now, tomorrow, but I can tell you one thing: it's pretty hot right now. Yeah, it is. So it means that whenever there's a heat wave, we have really good temperature in the shower, but it's not. I mean, we can't really work. It's just, it's too hot. Dan, there really isn't much that I can help you with right now, no, right? No, but I just need to connect this piece to this piece so, and take it up to the hot water thing. And then we really should uh, seal up these holes in the facade. Yeah, which we should do with some kind of... I bought the putty already. It's uh -huh. like this, uh, what I bought was the stuff you have around windows. I don't know the English word for it, but it's like window putty when you put where the glass meet the, the frame. Okay. Old windows, you put that stuff there. Okay, okay, and it okay. never really hardens. So it's going to be good for this progress project because it's going to be flexing and never crack and never leak, hopefully. Yeah. One thing that's worth saying, maybe, because I'm just checking out our installation now, and we do have people from all over the world watching us. Now, if this installation was done in Canada or in north of Sweden, people would go like, <laughs> um, your pipe will explode with the frost and the cold and so on and so on. You guys need to know that although we're in North Portugal, it doesn't get that cold here. There's an urban legend that apparently <laughs> the winters are very, very cold. Well, as Canadian and as Swedish, we can tell you, the winters up north, they're not cold. And uh, it's also du the duration of the coldness is one hour to three hours yeah. instead of uh, two months. <laughs> mm -hmm. It goes to minus five last year. Yeah. And it was for about an hour and then it started to go to zero and then you're in your 19s and 20s mm. almost yeah. in the winter even. Exactly. Means that for us, although like our pipes are going to be outside of the house we're gonna have to keep an eye out for mother nature a little bit if some kind of freak event happens that it does dip below five minus five degrees celsius then we will definitely need to think about adding some extra protection on these pipes so that dan's hard work just doesn't blow up in our face <laughs> we thought about depending on how much the, the water heater is going to build out but we thought about boxing in this area with the same type of cladding as the the house. So it just blends in. But now when we put up the pipe, it kind of look pretty cool. Pretty cool. Think. <laughs> pretty cool. So let's see what we do. But as you said, let's monitor during the winter and see if it's starting to freeze or if we need to put insulation on the pipes itself. Or mm. Anyhow, we're going to start like this, I think. Uh, take it from there. Yeah. So day three of the beginning of the bathroom, you have some work to do and mm. I have some editing to do. They all have work to do. So, do it.
Grapes, boo. I haven't seen him. Probably sleeping. As always. Well, basically what we did, we just wrapped the, since we don't want to have, want to have in pipes inside of the walls, we have decided to put most of the pipes on the outside of the walls in the kitchen and then on the back side of the bathroom outside so we see most of the pipes are exposed. However, we didn't want to have the bathroom pipes on top of the tiles. tiles. <laughs> yeah. So basically what we did, we wrapped them in plastic, the pipes, to prevent the water from leaking out in the walls, but putting plastic around it, it creates like a hollow space. And if you leave that open, I think with the hot and cold, it's going to create moisture in, in that little plastic bag and ruin the installation and studs. So what we did, we filled them up with foam, so at least it's not the hollow space that's going to create the condensation and so forth. And so what top. you're saying is that there'll be the pipes, our water pipe, our hot and cold water pipe, they won't be open up to air directly so that there's less room for condensation to form on, on the, the pipe, pipe itself. Yeah, yeah? exactly. Yeah. So we don't get that in the walls. Yeah. And then we're just going to leave it like this and maybe cut off some excess. But behind here, we're just going to do normal insulation as we've done in the rest of the house and then put plastic on, on top here as well. And this is the last wall we're going to do with plastic. This plastic you see on for the bedroom is coming down because we don't want to have the, the moisture hindrance in the whole house. It needs to travel from the kitchen to the bedroom freely, as well freely as it can in the walls. Yeah, because what we've noticed initially, we were going to plastic wrap the bathroom. But what we've noticed after living here is actually having that plastic 
kind of makes the house a little bit stuffy. So to prevent that stuffiness from happening, once we're done with the bathroom, we're going to be taking down the plastic that separates the bathroom and our bedroom. Right now, it's just an excellent dust barrier, right? Yeah, exactly. But in the future, plastic is not going to be part of our wall building process, no. correct? Mm -hmm. And the good thing, we have the plastic on the other side, so we can start with the insulation and complete the bathroom mm -hmm. before we need to take down the plastic. Exactly. And then when we do the last room, is the plastic needs to come down anyhow, because it's the bedroom. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, so the order of things that we're going to be doing right now, it's we'll focus on the bathroom. So for the rest of the week, it's going to be putting up some insulation, and then after that, putting up some gypsum. Plastic gypsum. Plastic gypsum, exactly. And then later after that, we're going to have a blank canvas so that we can kind of start putting the beautiful tiles up and we also, everything else. Also in the bathroom, we're going to have double gypsum. So one layer of regular gypsum and then one layer of the water gypsum on top of it. So the moisture will stay in the walls. What's the reasoning for double gypsum? Well, for our case, it's just to maintain the moisture a bit in the in the bathroom, but they're also better for, uh, they take moisture better than, because they're harder pressed, I think, so they take moisture a bit better than the normal sheets. And uh, we're safeguarding ourselves in the future for if you want to have heavier tiles, we have two layers of gypsum that can take up the, the weight of the tiles. Yeah. Plus that we have a bit more support in the middle for if you want to go super extreme and super heavy tiles. Mm. So we do have the support, but I don't think we're going to change to that tile anytime soon. I don't think so. So far, we're really happy with the tiles that we've chosen. Yeah. We've shown them to you in a past episode, but I'm sure at some point during this one or the next one, you'll see them again if you've missed them. Yeah. So yeah, that's about it. So today you're going to be focusing on this area. And then during that time, my job is going to be to keep an eye out for the Vodafone truck because today we're getting the first um, option of internet that we have available to us installed. Now, what we understand is that there's very, very, very little chances that this option will work in our area. We'll probably have to move up to the premium package, but still just having one hurdle clear and just the glimmer of internet <laughs> is just a really good feeling. And having a technician coming down to look at it measuring the signal I think is the best option for us right now. Yeah. One of the things that we can tell you is that in Portugal, if you're going to be relocating here, it could be handy for you. There are like three main companies, Mayo, Nos and Vodafone. If you do get internet from Mayo and from Nos, our understanding is that you just get a box shipped to your house and you need to do the installation yourself. With Vodafone, they still send a technician over. So for us, it's actually paramount to have to use Vodafone because our land is tricky when it comes to signals. So hopefully having a technician over with all this in instrument that he has, he can kind of measure where we have the best chance to have a signal, go with the most basic solution for now. And hopefully we won't need to upgrade. But if we do need to upgrade, we know that Vodafone also has a premium solution that also works a little bit like Starlink. Yeah. So, and by the way, we're not sponsored by any companies that we're mentioning in our videos. Uh, it's just really to give you some pointers because we know that many of you are planning to relocate to Portugal. So try to keep these, name, these names in mind. They'll come handy for sure. Mm. Yeah. All right. So you're going to be working on this and I'm going to be keeping an eye out for the truck because yeah. we don't want to miss it. No, not really. Oh, internet is going to be a blessing. One more thing to say maybe is that since we have hidden pipes behind the toilets here as well, uh, in the walls with like connections and we want to be able to see if, if the leak, we want to be able to change them. So we just created a small, it's going to be a, I don't know, a false wall that you just have to attach a 20 times 20 squares. So you can take it off and check the pipe. So we always kind of have access to the pipes while on on the bathroom side if it started to leak we have the option to take down the facade from the back of the house it's the same with the metal pieces so we don't have to tear down the tiles we can access the pipes from the outside of the house and then we can patch it up easier from the outside than it would be from the inside good thinking
That's about it. And is that you putting the last of the insulation? Well, not that. I'm putting any other That is good news. Well, guys, I'm still waiting for Vodafone. They're about half an hour late now. Our appointment was supposed to be between 11.30 and 2 o'clock, so it's a little bit past 2.30 right now. I'm starting to lose hope that we'll get internet today. And the reason why I'm having to look out for the truck is just because we have really, really bad mobile coverage on our land. So if they do happen to phone while they're around, the the call might not go through, but at least I'll get to see them so I can run after them. But, um, yeah. It's starting to feel like an emergency room in a Montreal hospital. It's a long way to get. Well done, you've been busy here. I have been busy. Yeah, I waited for Vodafone all day and they never showed up. Um, it could be that they tried to phone us and they couldn't get through because we have bad signal here. Nonetheless, tomorrow we're off to Bragance to reschedule another appointment for internet. Yes? Maybe, let's see. But you have been busy. You've insulated the entire bathroom. Well, I was on both Except uh, the back wall or the front wall. Ah, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we also made a, a box in in the top. So it's the. How do you call this then? I don't know. We're going to have it as a bit of everything because it's going to be for uh, hiding the cables that comes in from outside. Yeah. Plus that we're going to have uh, ventilation going from the living room to the bedroom taking the in the winter and I guess in the summer as well when it's just to get the air circulation but in the winter mostly to get the hot air from the stove so it pushes into the bedroom so we get the hot, the hot air because we still have quite a lot of uh, space in between the doorway and the, the roof so it's going to be a lot of hot air trapped up there so we plan on putting a Ventilation in between those two rooms that are a bit lower, maybe half a meter lower, so we get all that hot air going from the living room to the bedroom. The bathroom is one of the areas where we chose to spend the most amount of our budget. Because we want to do it once. Yeah. And hopefully just once. Just once. And we want to do it right, and we want to do it for something that fits us. Yeah. But you'll see that next week. Anyway... Thanks again for watching us. It truly means so much to us. And have a good week. See you guys next See week. See you next week. Ciao. Ciao, ciao.